Good morning guys from my hotel room in Graz, Austria. Um, well, this morning I'm just heading down to the railway station to take a train to Vienna uh, via the world famous and the first proper mountain railway in the world, the Semmering Railway. It's supposed to be fantastic, a uh, UNESCO World Heritage Site. So let's go and see what all the fuss is about, shall we? And I will see you on the train. Come on. Approaching Graz Hauptbahnhof from the main entrance, it certainly has a modern feel to it. And renovation works have been ongoing since 2001. Firstly, to incorporate a small shopping mall and platform escalators, and since 2010, to add additional platforms and lengthen the existing ones in preparation for its new role as an international transport hub when the high speed Corral railway is completed between here and Klagenfurt. All international traffic from Vienna to Italy will then pass through the station. The interior ceiling of the ticket hall is certainly unique, isn't it? Uh, a temporary installation by artist Peter Kogler in 2003. It's been here ever since. A large departure and arrival boards here. Our train, destined for Vienna Airport ultimately, would be arriving on Platform 1, uh, which was easy, wasn't it? Uh, so I made my way straight ahead and it wasn't long before it showed up. An OBB Railjet 7 coach consist, which I believe is operated in push-pull mode with the locomotive at the rear on this occasion and the driving trailer at the front. And you'll get a better view of that when we get to Vienna. So I climbed on board and headed for the quiet zone. Uh, the train wasn't due to depart until 7.26 and yet yeah, it was sparsely populated at this point. The carriage was in the expected 2-2 configuration with a mixture of airline and table seating. The first impressions were nice and spacious. Uh, the seat looked tan, felt pretty comfortable I thought. got a retractable armrest here, overhead reading lights and some kind of magazine attached to the sidewall. A drop down table, a very similar to the sort you'd find on something like a Transport for Wales Class 175 I thought. And yeah beneath that uh, a seat back pouch chair uh, which you don't actually get that often on UK trains. The leg room was really good, They're probably some of the best I've seen to be honest, and uh, yeah, between the seats you have uh, the standard European socket you would expect. We're left on time, passing the OBB night jet here that had come all the way down from Zurich. And not a bad morning outside really, a blue skies, and yeah, as we made our way through the outskirts of Graz, I was looking forward to the much better scenery that lay ahead. I'd heard of the Summering Railway before, but yeah, this was my first time on it. Now, named after the mountain pass, it starts at Mürzelschlag and ends in Glocknitz, uh, a total distance of 41 kilometres, or 25 and a half miles, and an altitude difference of 460 metres. Now, built between 1848 and 1854, the 20,000 or so workers constructed 14 tunnels, 16 viaducts, and over 100 smaller bridges. Now, like I said before, it's commonly referred to as the world's first true mountain railway, so it's no wonder really, is it? It's now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Anyway, I was feeling quite hungry. I'd had a bit of breakfast in Graz, but I knew there'd be a dining car on this train, and I wanted to have a look to see what was on offer. So I made my way towards the front of the train, where I found the door to the restaurant. There was quite a nice space in here. Uh, proper tables and not too crowded. And I sat down and ordered a coffee which was three euros and fifty cents. Not too bad really for onboard price and I guess. And it gave me an excuse to sit down, have a peruse of the menu and just have a look around the interior a bit. Well I don't know about you but I often find that sitting in the dining car is preferable to being back at my seat. Uh, they just uh, seem to me to be quite a relaxed environment. You can just hang out for a bit, people watch or just gaze out the window which is yeah, what I spent most of my time doing. I did have a quick try of the Wi-Fi at this point, which connected really quickly. I did the YouTube test, as you can see here, and it worked really well. Full marks for OBB on this experience. I was more interested in looking out the window than looking on my phone, and rightly so in this part of the world. The scenery was starting to get pretty mountainous outside. 
I wanted to have a quick look, if I could, at the first class and business section at the front of the train. So I asked the friendly staff member if I could just have a quick wander around and yeah, she was absolutely fine about it. And so I did. First class is the newest section to the dining car. All leather seats are laid out in a 2-1 configuration. Well, apart from these seats anyway. You have a small area here which also contains an information desk, uh, which is where I'm presuming the train manager sits. And then you have a much larger carriage, uh, which did have some people in it. And then you've got another small quiet zone section. And then finally on to business class, uh, which was really smart, uh, with these separate, I guess you could call them booths. I have to be a bit discreet here to be honest, uh, but I was grateful to have been allowed to have a look in the first place. As I returned, I thanked the member of staff in the dining car and yeah, I asked her how to get the best views of the Semmering Pass. Uh, she said sit on the right. So yeah, I made my way back to economy, I found an appropriate seat and got ready for a truly spectacular ride. Enjoy the views. Okay, so we've just passed Pyarbak Rykino, uh, which is not too far from Glotnitz, and marks the end of the Semmering Railway, well, certainly the exciting twisty bits anyway. Uh, time for a quick loo review, I think, and yeah, thoughtfully, the beautiful scenery has been recreated in here, just in case you need to go urgently and end up missing it, I suppose. 
That was fairly basic, really. Um, integrated into the mirror above the sink were large push buttons for the water and air dryer. They both worked, and there was some liquid soap available to your right. Opposite the sink was the toilet with a similar push button flush, and yeah, that was about it, really. Everything worked with a nice, fresh outdoor feel. Certainly no complaints from me. Okay, so approaching Vienna now. The um, price I paid for this trip, uh, which I only booked the night before, incidentally, was uh, 39 euros and 40 cents standard class. And that was for a journey time of around about two and a half hours, with a distance covered of approximately 144 kilometres. And if you're interested, uh, the price of first and business class upgrades are an additional 10 and 25 euros, respectively. Not too bad, really, in my opinion. Uh, we arrived into Vienna HBF on time, and after disembarking, I took a minute to sum up my thoughts before watching the train depart. Okay, guys, um, yes, just got uh, got into Vienna on the mail jet. I uh, tell you what, um, that was fantastic, wasn't it? The um, the Semmering Railway, and I, if you look back on the video, I, what I thought was amazing was as, as, the, as the train was going up to Semmering, it was like pretty grey and dull, wasn't much to see. And then as soon as it got there, the sky turned blue and there was some fantastic scenery and uh, the weather just made it all the more exciting for me. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I did and I'll catch you on another adventure soon. As always guys, cheers for now.